Hello. Welcome. I'm Nana. I'm here today to share with you some tutorials that are based on Irish customs, beliefs, and just pure magical beauty. Now these are the supplies that we have this morning and they're very simple. It's just simple clean copy paper and under this we have a sheet of construction paper which actually helps to hold your paper down so it doesn't slide all over the tabletop. This is a selection of different colors that we are going to use for these three tutorials. Um, there's a selection of browns and grays, greens, lots of blues, some yellow, red, and orange. So now we're going to start. We're going to begin today with a traditional shamrock, okay? I've, turned, I've asked the students to turn their paper vertically, so it's long ways, okay? What I want you to do is to pick up your dark green and use it as a pointer, okay? And we're going to start freehand. It's very simple. Shamrocks have very simple leaves. Almost like a heart, but mostly just smooth on top. And you have your first shamrock. And then we're going to put another one beside it so it won't be lonely. And you will notice that these are shamrocks that have three leaves. But because it will soon be St. Patrick's Day, we will have a four leaf clover or shamrock. And here he comes. Two, three, Four. And I think I put one more in here so it'll be a nice balanced picture. Almost like a heart. Very easy little leaves. There we go. Alright, now these are wonderful shamrocks, but they're out here in the middle of this big white paper all by themselves and they need to have some stems. This is a brown pastel and the shamrock has very skinny little stems. Very skinny little stems. There we go. Now, we're going to go ahead and take a lighter green, turn it on its side like this. It covers more area. And you don't have to go all the way to the edge. Let me show you. You see, I didn't go all the way to the edge. Take your painter finger, and this is the beauty of pastels. So you can fill in the color. If you get outside the line, watch, I'm going outside the line, it's perfectly all right. Okay? Just remember. Use it to fill in. You don't have to go all the way to the edge. So messiness doesn't count because if you think your, your shamrock is messy and outside the lines, actually it looks more artistic if it's a slightly messy. Okay. Now here we are with the dilemma again. We've got this be these beautiful shamrocks and they're all ready to be seen, but they just need something else. Let's take your purple pastel and let's just turn it on its side and just add a little bit of color in between. It's okay if it gets on the green. There we go. 
Now, again, you can take your painter finger if you want to, and you can kind of smooth it, smooth the purple or the lavender to where it's not quite so strong. It's more a little sort of hint of color. And here you go. You have your first, very first, uh, St. Patrick's Day decoration. You can put this on your refrigerator, up in your room, or whatever. And I forgot to mention, these are damp paper towels, which are good to wipe your fingers and hands. Okay, that's number one. We'll put this aside. Next, we're going to go to the Cliffs of Moore where I visited Ireland about three years ago. And these really are cliffs. They're several hundred feet tall. And we're going to show the cliffs and the sea beside the cliffs. And because they're pretty much, they don't have really have houses on top of the cliffs, but it just looked rather bare. So we decided to put some pretty little Irish houses on top. Again, we're going to turn our paper vertically. Take your black, use it as a pen, and we're going to start way up here at the top. Draw the top of the cliff. Here we go. And this is very simple. This is just a craggy, craggy cliff that goes down to the sea. Almost like a boot. Okay. Now, put your black down, and let's pick up the blue. Let's get that ocean in there, the sea in. Let's have it come up that high. Now, we have the cliff, we have the ocean. All right. Let's take a gray. How about a light gray? And turn it on the side. And remember, you don't have to fill in all the way up to the very edge. Look how quickly we can cover the space. Nana, Sabrina is asking, are these chalk or oil pastels? These are chalk pastels. All right, and let's put in a darker gray. Now, I didn't go all the way to the edge for a reason. The sun is shining from the right hand side. So we want to leave the right hand side a little bit lighter than the, the back side of the cliff. Okay? Now, let's finish up this C. Let's try a this color. That looks good together. You can pick out whatever colors you prefer. Now, as you see, I'm stopping right here. I'm going to have what looks like the foam or the breaking wave right here, okay? Now, I'm using a lighter blue and then going back to the dark blue to make sure everybody knows it's deep out there, okay? All right, now. Let's just rein in this C and make it breaking on the beach. Let's put in some clouds, cloud shapes. Is very easy to do. Then we're going to put some fine Irish people up on top of this this cliff, living in a little house. Here is their grass, all the way to the edge. Take your black, and let's put in a tiny little house. with maybe a barn next to it. 
and a nice red roof. They did really have red, red roofs in Ireland. And a little bit of a door and some windows. And we can actually even put a fence along here just so the children won't go fall off the edge of the cliff or their sheep. How about that? Now, all right, <clears throat> let's get some, some more sky around the clouds. And we always say the sky goes all the way down to the ground. Okay, even up here around the Irish house. Okay, see it's very light. And then you can just smooth it in, or you can leave it the way it is. One last thing. We're going to put some birds in. And they look like these. Because they're seen by you, the viewer, from far away. Now don't go crazy and cover up the sky with birds. Okay. And that's all there is to our Irish picture. These are the Cliffs of Moher. It's spelled M-O-H-R. Now, some of you might be familiar with these cliffs from a movie, a funny movie called The Princess Bride. And they actually did film at the Cliffs of Moher, but they, in the movie, called them the Cliffs of Insanity. So don't go crazy uh, trying to get your picture all just just so just remember you are the artist and you can make your cliffs look the way you want them to look okay let's move on now we're going to do a traditional pot of gold and believe it or not I think we'll do this one also vertically all right now the actual pot that the gold is in is up to your interpretation. I had a hard time trying to figure out what does a pot look like? So I'm going to do the best I can. You do the best you can too. Here we go. Okay. It almost looks like a smile. And if you like, you can put some handles on it. So when you find this pot of gold, you can pick it up. All right. Let's turn, turn our black on its side. Remember, you don't have to color all the way to the edge. Take your painter finger and let's just fill it in because we're going to put something else on this in just a minute. In fact, let's just go ahead and do it. I'm going to take our dark green. Remember we, when we painted our uh, shamrocks? I'm going to put a shamrock right here. And I'm going to make it a four-leaf one. All right. There we go. Now... Painting gold inside a pot can be a little bit tricky. So what we're going to do is to take an orangey gold color, okay? And also a yellow, all right? Let's, now this is not going to look like pieces of gold until we can highlight it. All right, let me show you what we're going to do. Just make little C's almost. All right, now watch what happens. There is your gold. See? You can even color it a little bit oranger. Let's just pile it up. And take
take your red, red or dark orange, whichever you prefer. Remember, this is your picture. There we go. And let's have some spilling out here on the ground. There will be a ground. <laughs> All right. And maybe some in front. Just make little happy, smiley coins. They look like macaroni almost. All right. Let's see. Look at that. And you've got your gold there. Let's put in a table. Here we go. Now, where is the pot of gold? We, we think of all the stories that we've heard about a pot of gold, and we know that the pot of gold so the stories and the traditions go that it's at the end of a rainbow. So let's see if we can figure out how to put a rainbow in coming down to our pot of gold to show, oh my goodness, that's where it is. Start with your red. And we're going to... Start at the very top of your page. Nice broad stroke of red. Can you do that with your pastel on its side? On its side, correct. And then we're going to do orange. Nice strong strokes. Yellow. Look at that. Then we're going to do green. And then, how oh, about blue? Now, I've run out of space going to my pot, but you get the idea it's going there. Last of all, the purple. So we have, <coughs> excuse me, so we have the rainbow. It's lighting up the pot of gold, okay? Now, we've got a lot of space down here. You may want to fill it up with some pieces of gold, but I would prefer, this is what I would do, I would just put a nice tablecloth or a covering to the table. Now don't stress about getting it around your gold, okay? Take your painter fingers and smooth it in. Smooth it on down to the end. You may want to even, oh goodness gracious, we could even put some, some sky color up here. Very lightly with the rainbow. Because we just don't like white paper showing. It looks like we're, we have not quite finished our painting. We're just about through. Sometimes I take my rainbow and just sort of smudge it a little bit so it looks like it's shimmering. Okay? There we go. And there is our pot of gold. So we have enjoyed having you visit with us today. We've done three very quick 
tutorials, and I think we've all had fun. Remember, you may use the colors that you prefer, if you like, uh, when you're drawing, but try my colors first, then explore on your own. Be sure that you sign your name in the corner of each one of your your uh, pastels. I'm going to do mine right here, Nana. Then flip it over on the back and name it. You can name it Pot of Gold or uh, St. Patrick's Day Surprise and put the date on it that, that you painted it. And then, run go show it to your family and your friends, and we all know what they're going to say. They will say, you are an artist. Now, we would like to thank Miss Amanda Bennett for having us today. Thank you, Amanda Bennett. We've had a wonderful time doing this. And I want to let all of you artists know that if you feel like we've gone a little bit quick with these tutorials, you are free to watch this again at your own pace. Watch it over and over again and enjoy this. And, you know, you can and do it as many times as you would like. And I would love for you to please take a picture of your paintings and share them at the hashtag you are an artist you can share them here on the unit studies by amanda bennett facebook page you can share them on instagram or on facebook and we will be watching for those because we would love to comment and see all that you have been doing we also want you to know that you can find us at chalkpastel.com and um, Miss Amanda Bennett is having a sale at unitstudy.com. Thank you very much for joining us. And I do see that there is a question about the type of paper that we use. Can you answer that, Nana? Well, there's all sorts of paper. But for beginning artists who haven't quite decided if they like pastels or not, and for the frugality and the the affordability of this art you can use just plain copy paper it works it is wonderful we have an endless supply because we get get it in reams and also when you get to feeling really like you want to paint you may use construction paper too but that is a whole nother story but for right now Mostly we use, um, you know, plain, plain copy paper. Thank you again for joining us and do leave us some comments and we'll be glad to follow up with some answers. We look forward to seeing you again. We share a live Facebook art tutorial at the chalkpastel.com Facebook page every, most every Wednesday at noon Eastern time. And remember, you are an artist.